Thank you so much, uh, Alina. Um, thanks, Jeff Adams, uh, our master host, who's doing an amazing job in the background here, here rather than all the other hosts, also some amazing ideas and content. If you haven't been listening, you're going to have to go back and uh, check out some great ideas as well. Um, as I mentioned, Alina Vincent, who ju was just presenting, was talking about a, a setting up a challenge, which is a, a really cool factor in, in terms of uh, developing great content uh, going forward and how you can actually leverage your position and that sort of thing. Um, so my name is Doyle Bueller, and I run a regular uh, Be Live TV show um, called the Digital Leadership Breakthrough Show, uh, where I talk about three times a week about digital strategy, uh, digital leadership with guests, and then uh, digital discovery where I answer specific uh, digital marketing question and answer. So today I'm going to be talking about um, organizing your content and how to um, amplify it. And this has actually been a very, it's been good because there's been a lot of consistent talk about in, in the uh, Be Live birthday. Oh yeah, by the way, happy birthday, Be Live. <laughs> I drew you guys a birthday cake, so hopefully you like that. Um, but uh, the, the content has been absolutely amazing. And what it is, is it's organizing you to say, hey, it's not just about the Facebook Live uh, event or the Be Live TV event or whatever you want to call it. It's what you actually do afterwards that that's really the most important because as you know, it, it, it's quite a short little piece. And that's where you can actually start to leverage that and how you can actually start to use it. So I typically have like three levels of content here. And hopefully I can just get my screen here up, um, get the agenda rolling and uh, see if I can pop that up there. Doesn't want to show. Uh, Jeff, I'm not sure I can't show my agenda, but that's okay. If not, uh, I'll just keep going. But there's three core parts that I want to talk about um, just to help you sort of slice these things down a little bit better because it can become quite overwhelming. There's lots to talk about. There's lots to learn. There's lots to actually strategize about and that sort of thing. But the first is your first is your tier one and that's your initial content. So that's the content that you can deal with directly after producing your, uh, your live performance. Uh, the second one is tier two, and that's what you'd call your secondary content. And I'm going to get to into that in terms of how do you actually uh, grow this and how do you actually make it work. And the third one is obviously your tertiary content. So this is content that's not super, super important, but you know what? You probably heard the term evergreen content or content that you can kind of rely on uh, going forward. So you have to have those three types of content uh, in any sort of content strategy that you develop as well. Um, because again, it helps you split things up. It makes it a little less mumbo jumbo and it makes it a lot more sort of organized so that you as the as the person providing that content can actually organize your thoughts and organize your ideas and see how uh, things go um, to get to go to get to that place. Oh, cool. Got, got my uh, uh, agenda back up and running. So uh, tier one is initial content, tier two is secondary, and th third is uh, tertiary content. What, what's really important is um, before we actually get into this, and, and because a lot of people have, have covered some of these concepts, what I really wanted to talk about was what kind of strategy can you actually do to, to provide the content? And um, some of the amazing speakers have talked about, you know, your specific uh, value, your your why. And that, that's really important because if you don't have that why, other people aren't going to really understand and aren't really going to connect uh, with your audience uh, as, as easy and as well. So you have to be able to provide consistency consistent value. You also have to be able to create real content that you would want to see. And, and again, there's there's so much stuff out, out there. And if you're not really focused that well, you're going to find that you may not be getting the contact, you may not be able to get the connection. So you have to be able to create real content that you would want to see. Um, concept number three is deliver consistency and congruency. So making sure that everything aligns with who you are, your why as a business, your audience, uh, what they're looking for, how they're actually developing things in the digital strategic space as well. And the last one is converting it, right? And this is a, a question that I get an awful lot, but you don't always need to produce something that is new, okay? And that's the whole idea behind uh, my little short little presentation is that Yes, it needs to be your own, of course, because we're not into uh, copyright and plagiarism and that sort of thing, but not everything needs to be brand new. And I think that slows a lot of people down because they're not, they're looking at, oh, well, today I have to write a new blog or tomorrow I have to write a new blog. And it's not like that at all. It's actually kind of how do you amplify your content? How do you actually uh, take your content and, and take pieces of it and actually uh, build it from there? So 
quickly in terms of tier one initial content, um, it, it's not that complicated, right? So download your video from Facebook. Um, a lot of people have talked about using rev.com, which is a fantastic service uh, to be able to create. What you want to do is create a, a, an SRT file for captions as well as a TXT file for blogs and notes and that sort of thing. Um, if you uh, just do an SRT file, you're going to get stuck where, where there's a lot of timing information, and that sort of thing. So upload the one audio file from your download, um, create an SRT, and then you can actually download an, a TXT file later. Now, what you wanna do next is upload the captions to your Facebook video, upload the YouTube video up to, with the captions to you know Vimeo, YouTube, obviously, uh, and LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is a great place uh, that you can start to share your video content. The only caveat there is that you have to have it in under 10 minutes. Um, and the last one in terms of tier one content is, is looking at how you can create articles. So what I typically do is after a BeLive uh, break, after my BeLive um, uh, <laughs> uh, be live show, um, what I do is I create a short articles on uh, link, uh, sorry, on Facebook notes, on LinkedIn articles, on Medium. You can also post it to your blog. You can also add the article link back to your Facebook live video as well so that people People who are who may have had bounced upon your video later in the show they actually can see that hey you're connecting it uh, to your entire digital ecosystem as well so keep that in mind how do you do that now in terms of secondary content again this isn't sort of the primary thing this is what happens next so what can you actually do to that content to leverage it to make it work a little bit a uh, little bit better uh, that sort of thing. So, so take a look at how can you create visuals from caption files. Um, as I mentioned, you download them as a text file. So create a quote, create a memo, uh, and that sort of thing. Look at using a podcast as well. I run a, a podcast where I use some sound bites uh, for from some of the guest interviews, and you can find those at uh, Breaking Dot Digital. Um, it, it's a little simple little trick, but. Having a podcast allows you to reuse that material and then share and schedule your content from across your channels also. So finally, as, as we kind of wrap up, hopefully I can get into some questions. Uh, you're looking at tertiary content, that third level of content that, again, it's not super important, but you should have it because people are going to be able to locate you and find you uh, down the road as well. So compile your episodes into a summit or an online conference like the BeLive uh, TV conference here, which is fantastic. Um, that gives people a great access access to you and to your content and to your message that you're trying to deliver. Uh, edit videos and audio as snippets, so taking out specific segments um, of, of a specific idea, a specific concept. Um, and then you can even add bumpers to it, an intro and an outro. Uh, you can write a book as well. You can make a present presentation and publish onto uh, slideshare.net. And you can even create a webinar. So isn't that cool? <laughs> That's all um, that I've got. Hopefully we've got time for a few questions. Um, thanks, uh, Lawrence and Dorothy. Um, cool, Jeff, yeah, okay. Got a few comments there. So um, yeah, so, so basically you wanna take a look at your content, making sure that number one, you organize it. So don't feel that you have to do everything all at once. If you separate it, that's a great way to sort of be thinking more strategic about it. Uh, take a look at your initial content, your secondary content, uh, and then your tertiary content as well. And don't forget how you actually deliver the content to people is, is by providing value, creating the real content. Uh, delivering consistency and then uh, converting it as well. You don't have to produce everything all the time. And I know that that gets a lot of people sort of stuck because they are saying, well, how do I actually create a, a new piece every time? And it's not that hard to be able to take this information and uh, be able to produce it and go from there. So it's been uh, a fantastic, who's up, who's up next? So here's, here's actually a question from Hilda. Thanks, Hilda. Do you think it's okay to repurpose a Facebook Live on YouTube or a blog? Absolutely. So that's how you actually are able to leverage this content that you've produced. So sometimes you have to do a few little different things uh, with it, but the, the obvious issue is how do you actually do that? So yeah, download it uh, from Facebook. Um, you can sort of add the intros and the outros and that sort of thing as you get into it. Um, but that's something simple that you can use. And, and if you're using LinkedIn, and again, this is where it's important to know your audience, um, if you can sort of cut it or edit it into 10 minutes or less, then upload that piece into uh, LinkedIn and then you'll be able to use it there. So it really depends on where your audience is and, and that sort of thing. So thank you so much for that question. Um, 
how can you get in touch with me? Well, I'm pretty uh, prolific on the uh, web. Uh, you can Google search uh, Doyle Bueller. I'm at Doyle Bueller. Uh, let's see if I can get my name up there. Do, 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 do. Anyway, you can find me. Um, oh, I'm slow sometimes. Um, that that's uh, yeah. Just Google me. There's only one of me in the world, so I'm pretty lucky in that regards. <laughs> um, uh, happy to help you out. Happy to answer answer any questions and that sort of thing. So, um, why do we get blocked on live shows? I want to continue joy communicating to learn my talks. That's from Sue. Um, it really depends. I'm not sure why. Perhaps if there was a a communication problem or something like that, um, that might be an issue with how do you actually uh, get connected. Um, excellent. Thanks, Tina. Shout out to Tina. <laughs> so many for all you today. Thank you. Yeah. For putting on an amazing uh, platform. I've been using be live for, uh, I think I signed up back in March and it's been, uh, an interesting, um, opportunity to, to kind of develop the, the platform and develop my show too. And that's sort of really where things have been going. Um, it's uh, one of those things that you really have to get into and you have to be able to be consistent about it. So I've seen some people, they do a live and it's like a, a one hit wonder kind of thing. They do a, you know, your street view or your car view or, you know, that sort of thing. And you see them once and then they disappear. So it's like, well, what, am I really better off for having listened to them as well? So Keep, keep in mind that you want to kind of build that consistency. You want to be able to, to see what's going on and, and uh, deliver that value. Because if you're not consistent, again, people will forget about you. If you're not top of mind, people will forget about you. So you really can do that uh, with your digital strategy as well. So that keeps things uh, moving from there. So um, let's see. Uh, thanks, Sushil, Sushil, for the comment. Uh, thanks, Tina Cook, as well. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Rish, Roshun. Yeah, LinkedIn has been my challenge. It, it has been an issue, but for the business to business play, like that's a huge opportunity, huge opportunity rather uh, to be able to implement video. And that's where you can take the Facebook Live uh, through the B Live programming and that sort of thing, and being able to use it in that marketplace as well. Because you can, of course, upload to YouTube and then share a link on share your YouTube link on. Um, uh, sorry, on LinkedIn. But uh, one of the issues there is that LinkedIn is obviously promoting their native video format. So that gives you an opportunity to say, hey, this is a, is a, is a, a specific format for LinkedIn. You do have to use your mobile device or, or a, an iPad or whatever the case may be. You can't obviously upload directly from the desktop. But you know what? It's not a big deal. So as long as it's 10 minutes or less, Use your B Live performance. Use your Facebook Live performance, and actually put that in place uh, as as you go as well. And then it's again part to promote it. Also, you can't just put it up there and leave it there. Um, so you have to deliver that consistency that I talked about as well. So, um, Antonio, why do you like B Live TV? <laughs> Great question. Um, it, it gives you that integration that you don't necessarily have because what it's really saying is that um, there are, there is a lot of tools out there right and as you know tools are tools kind of thing but it's it's really how you use them and if a tool can make your job easier then that's something that you want to be able to implement because if you don't have a, a toolkit right it's no different than being a, a plumber or an electrician or, or something like that if you don't have the right tools in your toolbox uh, you're not going to be able to do as good as job so this is Cool, because Facebook has uh, obviously some limitations with their what they can use with live. Um, can you bring in extra people? No, you can't. Can you have extra text? No, you can't. Uh, that sort of thing as well. So that gives you the opportunity to say, I, 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 this the platform is video, but what else do I need to be able to support that value that I'm trying to deliver? And what do I need to support that to create um, my real value and my real consistency? And then again, how can I actually convert that? So it's not just a one-off piece, it's, it's how can you actually implement the pieces into your, your entire uh, digital ecosystem as you get into that. So um, thanks for the question. Uh, Let's see, we got some more here. Well, keep 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 the questions coming. I'll keep going, Jeff, until <laughs> I'll keep answering questions. 
Um, let's see. Uh, cool. We got Steven. He's got, if you want to throw that one up there, he's got a be live TV course on Udemy uh, as well. So one of the things that's important to look out for is how can you actually learn to use the platform? And as we've seen from a lot of the speakers here, it's not that hard. So if you're just kind of watching the video to seeing, well, should I jump in or should I not type thing? Uh, you know, it's it's not that difficult. And there's a great support network uh, on Facebook groups, as well as sort of dealing with any of the tech, tech troubles or issues that you might have along the way as well. Um, but if you want to take a course, as as mentioned in the comments, you'll be able to find the link there. Uh, take a look at the course to see, you know, can I actually put these pieces together? And do I need specific um, outcomes or specific hardware or that sort of thing? But again, it's 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 pretty easy. It's uh, There's not too much to worry about. It's just a matter of, you know, clicking a few buttons and seeing what works and going from there. All right. Cool. So what else we got going on here? Thank you for all the amazing questions. Um, yes, BeLive, uh, sorry, I saw one flip by there. Does BeLive record the video so you can upload to YouTube directly after the stream is over? Yes, and that's how you, add, that's the cool part. Um, you do have to go into Facebook to download the video. Um, you can't download it directly from BeLive, but that's where you build that consistent uh, content across your ecosystem is making sure that, that you have all those pieces everywhere. And so, so yes, you do have to uh, go into um, the actual video and and download it. And one of the things too is that the I just want to talk quickly about this, but the um, the BeLive community itself. Um, there's a specific group where people who are doing, uh, working with BeLive and using it as, t as a tool. And if you're using the software, you're automatically eligible for that. Um, and then there's the, obviously the public Facebook group as well. And what that does, what the group does is it's actually helped me sort through some of the initial um, troubles or, or problems. Like so, for some reason, sometimes Facebook doesn't allow you to um, download or get to the edit edit section of the video or that sort of thing. So it's a great group that you can actually ask specific questions um, in terms of what, how do I do this? This isn't working. I need to fix this. Um, you know, what what can I do in this case? So so keep that in mind. So they've got a fantastic support network uh, in terms of putting things together and how you can actually get uh, help and go from there. So cool. What else we got here? Um, from Rishun, uh, I sure will do that via BeLive because my space is B2B, not B2C. And that that's perfect, right? B2C, it doesn't really matter. Again, you still want to look at how do you deliver your content? How do you actually, again, create that consistency? And, and how do you make it uh, last for a long, long time? So it doesn't really matter if you are B2C or B2B or or both or whatever the case may be. Um, it comes out to your, your ideas and your insights that are that are really important in terms of how do you actually uh, produce that value and, and how do you actually you know connect with, with your users and, and the things that you're being able to produce from there. So um, the, the important thing though is to, to help discover, as you do it a few times, you'll find out, okay, well, where's my audience? What are they watching? Even what times are good as well, and what I've found is that I create a, a schedule uh, of three, like I mentioned, three shows a week. And what I've done is I've said, okay, Monday at 2 p.m. I'm talking digital strategy. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. I'm talking digital leadership with a special guest, uh, and then Friday at 2 p.m. I'm talking about specific questions or challenges or that sort of thing. So people will start to get into this consistency that oh yeah, Doyle he's coming online uh, at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. So they kind of it's like a TV show, right? And that's really what you're wanting to produce as well. Uh, is an actual TV show. All right, Sue, we got a question here. Uh, what does B2B and B2C mean? Yeah, sorry. Um, business to business. So that would be if you're working with uh, businesses that are, again, working with consumers and B2C is business to consumers. So uh, sorry for the the, the slang. Um, so B to C is if you're dealing directly with a specific audience, with a specific group of consumers and business to business would be if you're dealing with specific businesses like insurance agencies or, you know, insurance companies or grocery stores, whereas the grocery store would be sort of a business to consumer. So they would then uh, deal directly with the consumer well, so, as well. So it depends on, on the business model that you have. Um, what is a good platform to use to have transcript subtitles on my video? Uh, the one I use, you, there's there's two ways to do this. There's actually a couple. 
Um, I've started to play with one called Trent, Trent.com, um, which is, it's kind of using artificial intelligence. And what it does is it gives you the ability to, um, uh, it takes some of the transcripts and then you can quickly review it and that sort of thing, which is a good idea because then you can see it, you can go through with it. And then uh, rev.com as well is, is a really good tool and they're very fast. For a 10 minute video, it takes about two hours or three hours sometimes if you get them at a good time and then you can quickly upload the SRT files. So awesome. And I, I see somebody's joined me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, cool. Uh, thanks, man, for, for hanging in there. We, we, ran into a guest running behind but thanks That's for okay. uh, filling in there for really appreciate it Doyle. yeah my pleasure no ha happy to awesome awesome well uh hey look further ado um i think she just popped in so this is good this is good timing every time i pop on the camera uh well she popped back out so let's wait a minute here um it will be all good in the hood in a minute but doyle thanks for all the information yeah absolutely and, uh, appreciate it my brother yeah no 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 problem whatsoever thanks jeff and happy birthday to all you guys